Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson, and this video is going to be introduction to linear equations and systems of linear equations. In this video we have two main goals. First we want to identify what linear equations and linear systems are, and second we want to list the possible solutions and define what a solution is for a linear system. First, what is a linear equation? A linear equation is an equation that can be written in this form. So here I have some number a1 times some variable x1 plus some number a2 times some variable x2, so on and so forth. The x1, x2, xn, these are our variables. The a1, a2, and an, these are our coefficients. They're just number values that are right next to the variable values. So now this is the definition of what a linear equation is, but odds are if I asked you what's a linear example of a linear equation, you might say a line. You might give me something like y equals 2x plus 3. This is the equation of a line that we've seen before that has a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of 3. So the question is, does this equation of a line actually satisfy our new definition for linear equations? And actually it does. We have two variables. This time they're called x and y, not x1 and x2. But if I subtract the 2x to the other side, then I have this written in the form of some number times a variable, some number, which is a 1 here, times the variable y, equals some number. So in this case, the coefficient to the x variable is negative 2, the coefficient to the y variable is 1, and I have a right-hand side of 3. So yes, this would be a linear equation. So now we've seen that a linear equation with two variables can be represented graphically with a line. And similarly, a linear equation with three variables can be represented graphically with a plane. Next, we need to talk about what are systems of linear equations. A system of linear equations is just one or more linear equations that involve the same variables. So here's an example. I have x1 plus x2 equals 1, and then a second equation, x1 minus x2 equals 3. I have two variables and two equations in this case. Now, the next question is, what is a solution to this system of linear equations? Well, a solution is just a set of values for my variables that make both of the equations true. So, for instance, I could say, is the value x1 equals 1 and x2 equals 0, would that be a possible solution? So is this value 1, 0 a solution to this linear system? And to see if it was, I would plug it into both of these equations to see if I make true statements. So for the first one, if I plug in x1 equals 1, I would get 1 plus x2 equals 0. And does that equal 1? And it does. But when I plug it in the second equation, I would get 1 minus 0 equals 3. That's not a true statement. So 1, 0 is not a solution. What about is 2, negative 1 a solution to this linear system? Let's try that one. If x1 is 2, I would get 2 plus negative 1. Is that equal to 1? Yes, it is. So it satisfies the first equation. Now we'll look at the second equation. What about 2 minus negative 1? Is that equal to 3? And yes, it is equal to 3. So because these values, x1 equals 2 and x2 equals negative 1, does satisfy both equations, we call this a solution to the system. Now since we already talked about how this linear equations of two variables can be represented graphically with a line, then a solution, because it satisfies both equations, is a point that is on both lines. In this case, would be the intersection of these two lines. So if I want to quickly to sketch out a graph of the first one, if I view this equation set of x1 and x2 as maybe uh, x and y, and this equation would look like y equals 1 minus x, I would have a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of negative 1. So my line would look like this. The next equation, if I rewrote that in terms of uh, x and y, and then solve for y, I would get y equals x minus 3. So this have a y-intercept of negative 3 and a slope of positive 1. So this equation would look something like this. While I'm just sketching this graph, I can see that that value I had before of 2, negative 1 does appear to be the intersection of these two lines. Now while I was able to test to see if certain values did give me a solution to the system, I want to be able to start with just the system and actually find the solutions. So if I wanted to solve the system, as maybe I've done in a previous course, 
one way I could do it is to add these two equations together. If I were to add these two equations together, I would get 2x1 and our x2 minus x2 would be 0x2, and this would be equal to 4. I would then take that and divide it by 2 to get x1 equals 2. That would give me a value for x1. I could use that value of x1, plug it into either one of my equations and find the appropriate value of x2. For instance, if I plugged x1 equals 2 into the first equation, I would get 2 plus x2 equals 1. Subtracting 2 from both sides would give me x2 equals negative 1. And so there I found my two solutions. I found the solutions x1 equals 2, x2 equals negative 1. So I can see my solution is x1 equals 2 and x2 equals negative 1. Now let's look at these two new systems. If I solve the first system on the left here, I would add these two equations together, and the result would be 0x1 plus 0x2 is equal to 0. So this would tell me 0 equals 0. And when does 0 equal 0? Well, it always equals 0. What does this tell me about the solutions? It tells me there are infinitely many solutions. In fact, I could start by generating a list of the solutions. If I chose x1 to be 0, for instance, x2 would have to be 1 to satisfy the equation. But if I chose x1 to be 1, x2 could be 0. If I chose x1 to be 2, x2 could be negative 1. And I could go on and on and on. The fact that I got this trivial solution when I solved this system tells me there are infinitely many solutions. And I can see that if I look back at these original equations. These two equations are really not two equations. They're basically telling me the same thing. The second equation is just taking the first equation and multiplying it by negative 1. If I wanted to plot these two things, I would end up getting the same line, just plotted over again. So for instance, the first one, if this was x plus y equals 1, and I solve that for y, it would be y equals 1 minus x. But similarly, if the second equation was negative x minus y equals negative 1, and I solve that, I would just get y equals 1 minus x again. So essentially, I'm plotting the same two lines with a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of negative 1. So this would be the first line, and this would be the second line. They share all their points, so there are infinitely points to satisfy both equations. The second system might be a little trickier to solve. In this case, I would like to take the second equation and subtract 2 times the first equation. If I do that, I would get 0x1 plus 0x2 equal to 2. So in this case, I'm saying 0 is equal to 2. And when is 0 equal to 2? Well, 0 is never equal to 2. So what this tells me is there is no solution to this system. Once again, graphically, I should be able to see this result as well. If I plotted the first one, the first one would look like y equals 1 minus x again. The second one would look like if I divide the whole thing by 2, I would get x plus y equals 2, or y equals 2 minus x. If I go to plot these, the first one has a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of negative 1, and the second one has a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of negative 1. So what I see is these two lines are parallel. Parallel lines never intersect, so there's never a solution uh, to this system. So now we've seen the big three results. I'm talking about solutions to a linear system. I can have no solutions, exactly one solution, or infinitely many solutions. So one question might be, why can't I have two solutions? Let's draw my first line here. Here's my line. Now what I need to do is find, if, if I can have two solutions, that means I can find some line that intersects this line at two points, these two points, but that's it. But any line that intersects this line at these two points would have to be the same line. I can't have a line that just passes through those two points because then it would, it would have to curve. It would not, not longer be a line. So we've seen now that we can solve small systems and we expect certain results for solutions. However, what happens if we had to solve a much larger system like this system? As you can see, it would take a, a long process to go through and find the solutions, to eliminate all the variables, to find a good solution set to this much larger system, this 5 by 5 system, 5 variables, 5 equations. But it could be even worse. What if I had a system with 500 variables 
and 500 equations, or 1,000 variables and 2,000 equations. How would I go about solving those larger systems? And that would be the topic to discuss next. And that concludes this video. Thank you.